Guys, what's going on? Jeremy LaFrance, Backstage Entertainment, downstairs, the Bourbon Theater tonight, Lincoln, Nebraska, sitting with none other than Mike, Devil Driver. Mike, what's going on? Not much, man. No, look, at, look where we're at. I mean, purple couches, yellow wall, the guys behind us trying to get the Nintendo to work, which, guys, how you doing? No, no, no. luck. No <laughs> uh, I was really hoping for Kung Fu to get <laughs> Yeah, what, what, are the, what are the games back there you guys were going to play? Super Mario 3 and Kung Fu, that's all they got. Yeah, yeah. Kung Fu's a fail. Okay, so no luck. So we'll maybe we'll it'll progress as the interview goes on, but I kind of <laughs> doubt it. Now, Mike, well, they get it working. The interview's over. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, so we'll, we'll try hurry up. To, all right, Winter Kills has been out. Sixth album harder to come. <laughs> has with uh, the sixth album is it harder to come up with songs now that it's the sixth album, or how does that writing process go? Mm -hmm. Who does it really start with in the band? Does I mean, does it start with a guitar riff, or does it, what? Oh, okay. interview's over, bro. Let's check it out. They got it running. They got it. Oh, shit. From Backstage Entertainment, this is Jeremy the France. We'll see you next time. <laughs> uh, no, I think it gets easier. Really? Yeah, because I do easier. think songwriting is a, a skill that takes practice. It's not something that, I, mean, I guess it is for probably some people, but yeah. I think songwriting is hopefully something better, or something that you get better as the more you do it. Yeah. And uh, so no, I actually kind of find that it does get a little bit easier. Um, also, oh, you get better working with, you know, other musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you probably have a, more of a tendency to fight and bicker over things. Yeah. And rather, and you also you kind of learn what people will like and what they won't like. Uh, and uh, it usually starts off with. Uh, we're not the type of band where we get in a practice room and come up with things together. We usually come up with ideas on our own bring it over to my studio, record it, put drums to it, right. and then critique it from there until we have it uh, an instrumental that we're happy with, and then we pass it on to Dez and he writes vocals on top of it. Got it, got it. Now, talk about this, I mean, with the band, um, a lot of you especially, you know, uh, you guys have a, de you know, a, a certain type of look to you guys and everything. When you guys are out in public, do you guys ever get, you know, the awkward looks, stuff like that? When or if I'm at a show, yeah. sometimes I'll have people come up to me. I've literally had maybe, you know, home, five people come up to me in my whole life in 10 years, you know, that have recognized me. And, uh, but, yeah, if I go to, like, a metal show or something like that in L.A., I might have someone hit me up every now and then. Right, yeah. So the fame is kind of going up there, but... I get a lot of people to think I'm Corey Taylor. Yeah, I, yeah I get that a lot. So, you know, and uh, is that probably, probably kind of an honor for you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I got no problem with that. Yeah. You know, uh, but uh, it, it's it, it slowed down a lot when when uh, he and I were both younger. I got it a lot more. Did you? But uh, you know, especially in like the first couple of years I was in this band. But uh, I, I think I've been asked if I'm Corey Taylor more than I've been asked if I'm Mike Spritzer. <laughs> yeah, that, that happens too. I mean. Gosh, you have you do you have the look. I was just yeah. thinking, I was trying to picture it here, but um, music video idea. Uh, I was watching the Appetite today. Where did that even idea come up? Because you guys have this kind of story behind it. So. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it, man. Uh, that was uh, all the director and Des's idea. I had no idea about what was going on with that video. This might be a better question then for you. I'm actually going to ask a band later because we have other interviews tonight and everything. As far as music videos go, do you prefer videos that have more of a storyline to them or the ones that maybe you guys are just sitting there playing? I, I like both. Yeah. Personally, I mean, from Double Driver's videos, I like the ones that feature us on tour. I think those came out better than a lot of the other videos that we've done. But I mean, videos are so... It's, it's really hard to make a good video these days. I mean, there people don't have the budgets that they used to to make a music video. And, you know, you can't spend weeks on a video where now it's like the longest I think we've ever spent on a, vid a video is two, maybe three days tops. Really? And that was dead to rights. And I can't remember if that was a two or three day shoot. Actually, I think it was two. And we weren't even... The band wasn't even there for the first day. Really? And uh, they did all the other stuff, and like the girl in that video, the priest in that video, like I never even met them. Okay. Because they were just like, we don't need the band here. You don't want, you know, a lot of times they don't want too many cooks in the kitchen. Right. And uh, um, I really, you know, I kind of take the low road when it comes to music, musical really? yeah. I, or music video ideas. Really? I focus like my role in the band is more musical than it right. is visual. 
Exactly. So it's safe to say, and this is probably with a lot of bands, is the band members are pretty low-key when it comes to music videos. They're not really even have much of a hand in it. Yeah. And to okay. tell you the truth, I kind of hate making videos. It's, dude, it's painful. Right. Like, they sit there and you have to headbang for literally like 15 hours straight like off and on and it's just like it's like playing 15 shows in one day and we're really? point where it's just like dude I just can't do it anymore and it's just I feel ridiculous up there I'm not an actor yeah it's um I I was watching this documentary on the Eagles our time off with my merch guy he stayed at my house during the two weeks we had off before this tour and um uh what's his name Peter Gabriel no not Peter Gabriel um Don Henley uh, he uh, he talked about when he left the Eagles and went on a solo career and like you know it was right during the beginning of the whole MTV yeah, yeah. you know thing where he had actually started making music videos and started acting and stuff like that and he was just like he hated it and whereas opposed to Glenn Fry actually got into acting you know he was in Jerry Maguire and I think he was on uh, Miami Vice and some other things so he, he was really accustomed to it I would definitely I'm on the other side of the spectrum like I would be the worst actor on the face of the earth I just wouldn't be able to do it and yeah. that's another reason why I hate making music videos because I just I feel silly yeah <laughs> yeah because I've, I've heard you have to just yeah you sit there yeah and you're like, sitting there you're not plugged in you're not really playing you know exactly. and it's just, you play like you pretty much air guitar air drummer yeah and I'm lip sync, whatever. I'm one of those people who's like dude we're gonna have to get me some alcohol quick you know it's just <laughs> to, to get through this day yeah Let's do the next question. We actually said that we had the interviews tonight, and we asked the, our fa fans on Facebook if they had any questions for you guys. So we have Jason Johnson, um, and this may be more what you know because um, they actually wanted to hey, ask Dez, which obviously we don't. But do you know is Cold Chamber going to do any another tour or new album? How does that kind of in your aspect there? How does it affect when another band member has another band for you guys? I think it can affect things, but in our case, we had done so much touring over the past 10, 12 years and released so many albums, one right after another, almost one every two years. I think it was actually a good thing for us to take a break. Okay. And because I think we've kind of, we've been the same place too many times. And for me personally, I am quite busy when I'm at home producing, mixing, mastering records for other bands and so it gave me a chance to step back and kind of work on my producing career a little bit more and I really don't have a problem with it. Okay. And I think it was good for Devil Driver. I think it was good for Cold Chamber because when they ended as a band and things ended on a very sour note and I um, I actually became friends with Meigs and Mikey before Dez and you know made up with the whole camp and uh, um, I thought it was nice to see old friends become friends again. Okay. So it, it does have a positive effect yeah. on the bands and stuff, too, because yeah. it is nice to take the break. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're done with those questions. Like I told you, uh, we have this BSC box here. What fans have done, fans found Backstage Entertainment on Facebook, liked their page, and got their own questions in here. Mm -hmm. Have you experienced anything like this before? No. No. So a little different style. So what you're going to do is pick a question, read it, and then... We'll see what the answer is. Alrighty. And like you said too, you're the part of a, a bad actor, so we took out the action part of it too for you. Now you know why I wanted to take <laughs> yeah, it out. Exactly. What's another talent you have unrelated to music? Um, if you want to call it a talent, I'm very much into water sports, okay. uh, kiteboarding, surfing, mostly surfing these days. Um, I do quite a bit of kiteboarding. And uh, I haven't been able to do it in a while, but I'm also, I've been into wakeboarding since I was like eight years old. Okay. Um, I used to skateboard and snowboard, but I would just get hurt too often, and right. um, I don't want to... Yeah, yeah. got to be careful. I would have band members be very pissed off at me. <laughs> so, uh, no, no, I do skateboard still from time to time, right. but I'm just the guy that cruises up and down the beach. Okay. Try another one then? Sure. Uh, when was the first time you were asked to sign an autograph? That was actually before I was in Devil Driver. I vaguely remember I was in a band in Santa Barbara called Sistrot, and it was just a, a, a very progressive black metal, death metal band. It had songs that were like 15 minutes long, and I remember after playing a show, we were, we were selling CDs, and uh, someone came up to me and asked me to sign it. And that was, yeah, that was probably like 18 or 19 years old. So it wasn't a, hey, Corey Taylor, sign this for me? Nope. I got that. The only time I've ever really had 
people asked me for autographs, like they were sure I was Corey Taylor, was Ozfest 2004. Okay. And every day, and they, like the, a couple times they thought I was Joey. Um, one time someone asked me if I was Paul. Really? And I was like, Paul and I don't look anything alike, yeah. you know? I did have long black hair back then, so I get the Joey oh, thing. Yeah, okay, yeah. And uh, then I think there were, we were in the last week of Ozfest, and I think we had maybe three more shows, and I asked Corey, you know, I kept on telling him, people think I'm you. And he's just like, he showed, you know, he showed me how to do his autograph, and he's like, go along with it and let me know what happens. Okay. And after that, no one asked me. Yeah, okay. So I never really... I was going to take advantage of it. I say, yeah, he taught you how to do it and everything. Huh? But, uh, do you say just, do you disappoint people then? Or you say, oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to step on any toes, so. Yeah, okay. It's okay, Roll, you can go through. <laughs> oh, okay. We're getting, yep, through. all right, one more question, let's do that. All right. If you could hang out with anyone dead or alive, okay. If you could hang out with anyone dead or alive, who would it be? Do you get this question quite a bit in interviews? No. I don't. Uh, dead or alive, who would it be? Uh, I've actually kind of, I, I think maybe, uh, been kind of fascinated with Rasputin lately. And uh, if you're not familiar with him, he had just like, there's, you know, legends, mysteries surrounding him about, you know, with all these mystical powers that people claimed he had. and. They say that uh, when they finally, when he was killed, they shot him. No, they poisoned him with cyanide, shot him a few times in somewhere in the torso, and didn't die until he f took a couple bullets in the head. And then, well, and that's the story anyway. And he's basically responsible for the whole Russian monarchy, uh, fall, you know, falling back in the day. And uh, just an interesting story. So I guess hanging out with him would yeah, be quite the interesting. Real story there, yeah. huh? That'd be kind of cool. All right, last message. What do you want to leave the fans with today? Well, we got a new record out on a uh, new record label, too. Uh, Napalm Records. Uh, an album's called Winter Kills. Uh, and uh, the uh, the fan response to this record has been the best since Lost Gun Words. Okay. So if uh, <laughs> if you weren't happy with our last couple of records and you're a fan of uh, Fear of Our Maker's Hand, Last Kind Words, you, you'll probably enjoy it. Okay. All right. Well, guys, once again, we got Mike, Devil Driver. Definitely check out the new album, Winter Kills. Once again, Jeremy, Backstage Entertainment. Thanks, guys. Hey, everyone. Become a fan of Backstage Entertainment on Facebook and enter in contests to win autographed prizes from the bands and entertainers we interview. By joining our page, you can also contact us to submit your own questions into the BSC box. And make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to see all of our interviews and backstage footage from the shows. From Backstage Entertainment, I'm Jeremy LaFrance.